Not so long ago, I was an SFU Econ undergrad, just like all of you. And I remember coming to an event very much like this, except it was on Burnaby Mountain, and I was sitting on that side of the stage, where you all are. This is a picture, if we can make it happen, let's see. No, no, where do I point? Ah, there you go. This is a picture circa that time. So 10 years ago, 2005, from some newsletter about international students like that I got profiled. Uh, so tonight, I want to share a little bit about my story and what happened since this picture was taken uh, to show you that there are a lot of opportunities out there with the kind of skills you guys are learning today uh, and so many areas that you may not have thought about. So I'm also an international student. This is, uh, as I mentioned, a picture of me. I came to Canada uh, in 99 on a scholarship to attend a two-year high school program in Vancouver Island. It's called Pearson College. It's a, it, that's where I took my first economics course, because we didn't have economics at the high school level in Bulgaria. And that's where um, I really got into it, and that's how I got started. So I was born and raised in Bulgaria, which you will see here as a little country in white, uh, just north of Greece and Turkey. And you might notice that this is on the other side of the Iron Curtain, uh, for most of you here. So, there were many problems with the political and economic system of the old Soviet bloc, and I'm sure you all know. But when I started grade one, all my friends' parents had jobs, they all had decent housing, they had food on the table, and all our grandparents had a secure retirement. By grade seven, mass unemployment, beggars on the streets, and grannies rummaging through the city garbage cans in search of food had become commonplace. Meanwhile, Muscular young men with black suits, sunglasses, big gold chains, and expensive new cars came to control much of Bulgarian business. This is what the so-called transition to a market economy looked like in Bulgaria in the late 90s. For me as a teenager, this was a very stark example of how a shift in social and economic policies can immediately and largely impact people's daily lives. You saw it change almost overnight. When I came to Canada and started studying economics, it really provided me with a framework to understand what was happening in my own country. Everything made a lot more sense when you thought about misaligned incentives, supply and demand. So I went into SFU economics already having taken a little bit of economic classes and knowing that poorly designed economic policies can cause a lot of suffering, almost as much as physical illness can to communities and countries. So what I wanted to do at SFU Economics was to understand more about how the economy works so that I could help fix some of those poorly designed policies. Because surely, if you can make things worse with a policy shift, you should be able to make things better with a policy shift. As a senior economist and public interest researcher at the BC office, I get to do a lot of research and write. So it's much like being in school. I love my job because I get to do research about things that matter and that are happening here in our community. And my research doesn't just sit on a shelf gathering dust. Our reports are written in accessible language, they are available for free online, and they're widely read and circulated. I also get to share my findings and their policy implications with the community at public events and through the media. I blog at our blog called policynote.ca, which you should check out. And I'm frequently called to provide media commentary on current economic and social policy issues facing us in Canada. So I think economics can be a really, a really, really useful background for people who want to make a difference in their communities. Go talk to a person working in the field you're interested in with the idea of building a relationship. Seek mentorship. Seek fellowship, even from people who are not traveling exactly the same path as you. If they are willing to help you, that will be very useful. Number two, there are many jobs, some very lucrative, in areas that we know are not good for society. There are very smart economists whose job is to help powerful and hugely profitable companies like Apple pay very little tax anywhere in the world. We know that this practice, known as transfer pricing, is not good for society. We know that high frequency trading is not good for society. But you can make a lot of money doing it. So ask yourself, 
Is that what you want to spend your life doing? If the answer is yes, this talk is not going to convince you otherwise. But now that you're making a decision, and make sure you can live with the decisions you made. Now, there are many opportunities to use your skills and knowledge as a force for good. The vibrant nonprofit sector is one, but it's not the only place. Vancouver has a thriving community of social entrepreneurs and change leaders. Now, how you get to meet them, and more importantly, how you get to them to mentor you is the key question you should be interested in. My advice is find out what's going on off campus. Attend events in the community. Many great ones are hosted by SFU here at Carver Center or at SFU Woodward. 